Welcome to this week's episode of Hoyt's Bow Hunting Whitetails. I'm back at the farm, finally getting my cameras out, and I did get 10 cameras out today, and I put them in what I think are some pretty good spots. Uh, I like to keep my cameras away from where I think are the most sensitive parts of the property. Like, I don't go into bedding areas. Uh, I don't like to push in on the deer. So mine are almost always around the fringes. Uh, but fortunately, in the state of Iowa, we're able to use corn in front of our cameras. We can't hunt over corn because baiting is not legal, but it's still legal to put it in front of your cameras. So, you know, it's kind of a fine line and you need to talk to your game warden about, you know, exactly, you know, what your rights are and what, you know, what the law requires. But uh, as long as you're not hunting it and you're not hunting trails leading to it, and I'm always done way before I start hunting anyway. But anyway, the point is um, I can pull deer to my cameras so I don't have to be right on top of them. I can let them work their way to me and that's a lot better for uh, keeping a low impact. So next week, with any luck, I should have some bucks to show you. And uh, hopefully there's something here. I mean, I've, I've got a lot of money invested in this farm. I'd like to think there's at least one shooter here. <laughs> I probably shouldn't say that on camera. Um, but anyway, um, this week I wanna talk about a topic that's, uh, I think it's the most challenging thing that we face as bow hunters. And it's not uh, uh, something that might pop into your head right away. Every evening, if you hunt near the food sources, you've got to find some way to get away from your tree stand or your ground blind without uh, educating any of the deer in that feeding area. And that is so hard, super hard. And I've battled that. I mean, I've got spots that I've hunted where I can go in there once because I know I can't get out of there. So I'm going to get one good hunt. So I'll just, you know, pick my punch and I'll wait until just the perfect time and go hunt that spot knowing that, you know, on the way out, I'm going to mess it up. So I've got those kind of spots, but fortunately I've also got some spots that I can get in and out uh, pretty consistently. And I can get out of there at the end of legal shooting time without bumping the deer. And so let's talk about those types of spots and, and how they're set up. Uh, but before I get to that, I'm gonna say there's four ways that you can do this. There's four ways that you can hunt these spots um, without messing them up at the end of legal shooting time. One is you've got to have a person come and bump those deer off the, the uh, field. You know, you know, move them away. They come with a vehicle, they come with a ATV, whatever. The deer don't take that nearly as hard as if you climb down out of your blind or out of your tree stand and spook them that way. They're kind of used to that human activity coming from the roads, coming from the farm sites. Uh, they'll be back again the next evening. I've seen it many times. Uh, they don't take that, like I said, nearly as bad. Uh, that's, that's the best way. If you had, I'd say option number one, that's the best. Uh, option number two is to have one of these stands like the ones I'm gonna talk about that you can actually get out of at the end of legal shooting time, even with deer nearby and not have them pick you off. Um, number three is uh, if, it's a, if it's a blind, sleep in the blind. And that's what I did quite a bit of last year. I just couldn't go to and from those spots, uh, especially from in the evening because there was so much um, of food sources that I had to walk through to get back to my vehicle and it just wasn't I didn't have anybody that could bump the deer so what I was doing then is I'd go in in the evening into these blinds um, you know hunt the evening and then sleep in the blind hunt the morning out of the same spot and then go out you know late morning and I didn't bump any deer that way uh, that's a little bit more extreme but if your blinds are in the right spot they can be good for morning and evening so I really kind of focused on that that strategy um, so that's three. Number four is trying something creative. And, uh, you know, I, I, I've had this idea in the back of my mind for years that if I had one of these remote control monster trucks with the great big giant tires, you know, that can kind of roll over anything, that I could fire that thing up at the end of legal shooting time on the other side of the food plot or, you know, someplace 50 yards away from my tree stand or my blind and have that thing come chasing out into the field run all the deer off as if it was, you know, a coyote or something coming in there and then, uh, you know, drive it over to the tree stand and then pick it up and take it out with me. And I don't know for sure if that will work, but um, I mean, it would definitely chase the deer off. I just don't know if you can remotely fire those things up. I know they have a long range, like 250 to 300 feet, you know, so you could get them far enough away, but can you get them to turn on, you know, without being, you know, right there flipping a the switch? So I've got to do some research and find out. In the meantime, I actually did call my game warden and I asked him if it was legal because I thought, you know, maybe this falls under that category of pursuing a deer with electronics. 
And uh, he said, as far as he, he could tell in the state of Iowa, that there was nothing that said you couldn't do this. So, it, like I said, it's something to think about. I, I may try it this fall. In fact, I will try it this fall. So I'll keep checking back once I get into the season and, and we'll see if my remote control monster buck is, uh, or monster truck is uh, gonna turn the trick for me. But uh, check, check with your local game warden on that. I mean, don't just assume it's legal where you're at. Um, so anyway, there's, there's four ways. Um, I got kind of distracted there on the old remote control truck, but um, have somebody come and bump them, hunt only those spots that you can get out of. There aren't very many of those, unfortunately. I've got three of them, or I've had three of them. Um, or st sleep in the blind, or fourth, you know, do something creative to distract the deer. The last thing you wanna do if you're trapped in the tree or trapped in the blind is to spook the deer from the tree or the blind. You know, and, and I know it's tempting to think, well, I could throw something out. Maybe I could throw my rattling antlers at them or something, but they still then uh, attribute that scare to your tree or to your blind. And uh, that'll come back to haunt you. They, they uh, don't forgive those kinds of things quickly. Like I said, they don't mind if somebody comes from the farm and drives up there in a truck or a tractor, but they sure don't like it if you climb down out of a tree or out of a ground blind, uh, they're gonna keep their eye on that spot for the whole rest of the season. So anyway, what were these four, three spots? I've had three spots on the farm that I sold and I'm, I'll figure out what I can do here before I'm done, but um, three spots that I could get out of. Uh, two of them were uh, in tree stands that were back from the edge of the field. So they were about five yards in, it was really brushy and the, and the ground dropped away really fast. And they were pretty good sized trees. So I could climb up and down the back of the tree, you know, hide behind the tree as I was climbing down. And once I got to the ground, the brush was thick enough that they couldn't see me when I, you know, quickly dropped off using the terrain and disappeared. So I would keep those spots really clean, you know, rake away any leaves so that I could sneak out of there really quiet. With any wind at all, there'd be deer 20 yards away feeding and I could get out of those spots, believe it or not. Uh, so I had two of those and one of them was a ground blind, uh, a redneck blind that I had in a uh, fence line that was loaded with cedar trees. And those cedar trees were so thick that the deer couldn't see through that wall. And my blind was just stuck right into that. And I put a whole bunch of uh, branches, you know, interwove them into the, the uh, metal stand that the blind sets on underneath the blind. So even as I'm climbing down the ladder, they can't see me. If you could go by yourself and go quiet and slow, you could get in and out of that blind with deer 20 yards away. I've done it. So those are pretty rare situations, but once in a while you can set those up. And again, you've got to have either something that you can sneak behind, something really thick, or it's got to be a spot where the terrain drops away really quick. So once you get on the ground, you can disappear uh, really fast. So uh, like I said, it's, a, it's the biggest challenge that we face. You know, I can, I can usually find a way to sneak in and out of a lot of places, but Boy, it is sure tough to sneak out of a feeding area at the end of legal shooting time. So hopefully these tips will help you. Um, I'm gonna be, like I said, back again next week and uh, I'll show you what I found on the farm here. Uh, I'm seeing a fair amount of tracks. I don't think there's a ton of deer here. You know, driving around the crop fields, there's not a lot of crop damage, which is good. I mean, I'm not looking for tons of deer. So uh, it'll be interesting to see. I mean, I'm, I'm, uh, I'm gonna be fascinated by what pops up on these 10 cameras. Well, I appreciate you joining me. We'll see you right back here again next week for the next episode of Hoyt's Bowhunting Whitetails. And remember to always dream big.